Hey, scrappers and recyclers, it's Shark Scrapper. Well, apparently you really enjoyed the video that I did where I looked at how you make the most money scrapping older hard drives with the IDE pin type boards or the high grade hard drive boards. And several of you asked me to do the same thing using the newer hard drives with the SATA connectors. So come on, let's dive in and do some math. Well, just like we did before, the first step is to weigh the 10 hard drives. In this case, it comes out to be 13.85 pounds. And no, Geek Shark, I am not going to scrap 100 of these just to give you more data. Suck it up, loser. Get our clock ready to go here. We've got 10 hard drives ready to go. I've got a T8 Torx bit loaded. I've got a Phillips bit ready, so Let's make it happen. I think most of these are going to be Torx because I, don't, I haven't seen as many um, Phillips with these newer board and I've got a hand Torx here because sometimes they can be a little uncooperative like that one was. We're going to get back to that one. That might be a smaller Torx. There's another one that doesn't want to cooperate. It might be that it's a smaller, it is, it's a smaller Torx. So that's all right. I'm not going to bother trying to take the time to switch out that bit. We'll just use the hand Torx here. Come on, you. That screw is the one that I'm tried to originally and I may have messed it up but that's all right we can just pop that right off without that without any trouble and that was 356 so it took me a minute longer but that's because some of I had to you know I some of them were T6s instead of T8s um, so that happens I don't think that's going to make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boards, a little tiny piece of one of the boards that broke. The main reason why Geek Shark, all, all joking aside, all the main reason why Geek Shark actually wanted me to do more is because the larger your sample size, then when you average things out, they tend to be a more accurate, you know, because you might have 
in a in a disc you might have one disc you might have two discs you know platters uh, so uh, it it it's trying to average out uh, those variations uh, across the large uh, uh, variety of the uh, hard drives that exist um, but I think 10 is sufficient for our purposes for this video all right so it was 356 now we got to get some weights not unexpected the boards weigh less than the boards that we got from the uh, non SATA connectors so 0 0.42 and you could see these were smaller than some of those boards that we took off in the older hard drive so 0 0.42 And the hard drives without the boards comes in at 13.40. Again, we're come, we come in really close to the same weights uh, once we add everything up. 13.82 versus 13.85, so 0 0.03, just like with the other hard drives, and waste from the screws that we took out. All right, Dirty Sweaty Shark, you understand why I want 100, but you're only going to do 10. Man, you suck at data analysis. Now, we're using the very same spreadsheet that we used for the non-SATA hard drive boards. We just changed a couple of labels here. So we have the complete hard drives. This time it was 13.85 pounds. The price doesn't change. It's still 70 cents a pound. So that gives us $9.70 for 10 or 97 cents per hard drive. Now we're going to scrap them, and this is where we're going to see the big difference. Hard drive, no board, 13.4 pounds at 25 cents a pound, because that doesn't change, gives us $3.35 or 34 cents per hard drive. The SATA boards is a different, very different price. The weight was also very different. We have 0.42 pounds, and the price is $8.25 a pound, much less than the IDE pinned or non-SATA hard drive boards. So that gives us a total of $3.47 for 10 of them, or $0.35 cents because of the round-offs for the... Uh, for a single board averaged uh, and that makes the total scrap value six dollars and 82 cents for 10 of the hard drives or 68 cents per hard drive we look oh man we lost money we lost money doing this so if, if for all 10 of the hard drives we lost two dollars and 88 cents by taking the by taking them apart on a per hard drive basis we lost 29 cents we're losing money regardless of the time that was spent in this we're losing money when we take the sata hard drive boards off of the hard drives versus just selling them as a hard drive with the board on uh, if we do look at the time uh, it took a little bit longer to do this so 0 0.066 hours so we're losing, and we lost $2.88 on the 10 of them, so we lost $43.64 an hour on 10 of them, or $4.36 an hour per hard drive. Ouch. Uh, of course, it's always interesting to look at the weighted average, so the total weight, 13.85 pounds. Boards were 0.42 pounds of that weight, or oops three percent and remember in the IDE pins the boards made up six percent uh, on the scrap value uh, the scrap value of six dollars and 82 cents the board value was three dollars and 47 cents so the boards made up 51 percent of the value and remember on the non-SATA IDE pinned hard drives, the boards made up 81% of the value. All right, so the bottom line is we're losing money doing this. I mean, there is no reason to do this. 
huh, I wonder if I can put those boards back on. Well, I mean, you know, dirty sweaty shark. <laughs> He's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. No, I'm not going to put the boards back on, Geek Shark. What are you thinking? And oh, just imagine if we had done 100 of them, we'd be out 28 bucks right now. To almost 29 bucks. Oh, God. The stuff I have to put up with. Hey, look, bottom line, folks, do not waste your time with hard drives that have SATA pin boards. Just sell them as a hard drive with the board on. Now, of course, if you're selling them to your local scrapyard, you need to look at what they're paying you because the math might be different. But if you're selling your stuff to board sort, uh, especially you know if you're selling the boards and the hard drives to board sort, it's you're, you're losing money doing this. So, you know, as always, check these numbers based on your local conditions. Make the decision that makes the most sense for you. The point of this video is to show you that sometimes the math doesn't work out in your favor. I kind of had a feeling that this is the way things were going to work out anyway. So I've always kept the SATA pin hard drive separate from the non-SATA hard drives. Uh, and now I know it's worth my time not to do this. <laughs> well, I hope you found it interesting and I hope that this will help you to make some more money when you're scrapping your electronics, especially when you get these hard drives. If you found it valuable, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And there's links popping up here to take you to more of these great videos to help you make more money when you're scrapping electronics. The round thing in the middle, that's to help you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of Shark Scrapper. Take care, be safe, we'll see you on the next one.